What up guys, Scrub Quad Pro here, bring, here from the Cash Kelly and AC Network. Bring you a raw recap from June 13th. Before I get into this raw recap, do not forget to subscribe to me up there, like this video, and leave me your comments on last night's Monday Night Raw and the build up to capital punishment. So this started off with The Miz coming out and pretty much calling out Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin came out and he pretty much whooped The Miz's ass talking wise like there was no actually punches or anything thrown but Stone Cold pretty much pwned The Miz and The Miz left the ring looking like a complete idiot and he also announced that um, The Miz and Alex Riley are going to be on Piper's Pit later on in the evening and that was actually after that I believe Alberto Del Rio came out and he decided to try to talk to Stone Cold so Stone Cold gave him a match he pretty much said that this guy had been waiting to get his hands on you and for a split second I thought it was gonna be Kevin Nash I was so happy I was like yeah Kevin Nash but then it was Kane wasn't very happy about it or wasn't as happy and so in that match Kane beat Alberto Del Rio by disqualification when Alberto Del Rio failed to break the five count on his armbar when Kane had the ropes and then after that Alberto Del Rio kept the um, armbar on and then out came the big show he hit Del Rio once or twice Del Rio fled the ring and then Ricardo Rodriguez took the beating from the big show and after that Stone Cold came out and said that the Miz, I mean not the Miz, Alberto Del Rio and The Big Show are going to have a match at Capital Punishment. I honestly had thought that we'd already knew, known that, but I guess we hadn't, and now they, that match is official. So then we had, now this was the All-Star Night, so there's a lot of, there was a lot of filler matches, like there was a SmackDown with just SmackDown superstars, um, Randy Orton came out and talked for a little bit, but he couldn't getting any physical conflictions because the general manager said he was going to strip the title. That's pretty stupid being that the anonymous Raw general manager is on Raw. Randy Orton is not on Raw. He's on SmackDown. I thought that was kind of dumb. But then so we have The Miz and Alex Riley on the Piper's Pit. So like always they jawed at each other for a little bit and then it eventually led into Miz betting $5,000 that Roddy Piper couldn't beat him in a match so Roddy Piper and the Miz had a match and Roddy Piper won that match and pretty much won $5,000 I mean he probably didn't actually get the $5,000 but he won it and he won because Alex Riley was the ref you know they're not gonna leave him out of the fun and the main event of the night was CM Punk versus John Cena, um, a little old feud from earlier in the year. And that match was, of course, interrupted by R Truth because that's what he does. Uh, and Punk won the match. So earlier in the show, before that, R Truth had a little segment with Hornswoggle where he came and beat him up. And at the beginning of the segment, I thought R Truth was once again over the top. Looked like a bit of a pedophile there. His eyes were all open wide. He was all like, I like to have fun. I thought that was pretty weird. But this segment turned out overall good. I mean, of course, he beat up Hornswoggle while he was shooting t shirts. But, you know, that's what you expect from the heel. But there was one thing that I really did not like about last night's Monday Night Raw, and that was the absence of Zack Ryder. Monday Night Raw was in Long Island, New York, which is where Zack Ryder is from. And Zack Ryder was not on the show. Instead of being on Monday Night Raw, he was on WWE Superstars. That that's not right. Like if that was anyone else, there would have been like a special welcoming party. Like John Cena, when he's in his little hometown of wherever the hell he's from, they have like a he he starts the show when everyone goes wild and stuff. Zack Ryder wasn't even shown on camera. Like, that's a little ridiculous. I don't know who's in control of that. If it's Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon, creative team, they gotta step on their game. Zack Ryder should be on the show when it's in his hometown. And then, what I liked about this thing that I didn't like, 
that makes any sense. Chris Jericho and Dolph Ziggler backed up Zack Ryder on Twitter. They both sort of expressed how they thought it was a little messed up that he wasn't on the show. And I appreciate that, even though Chris Jericho isn't really signed to a WWE contract. He needs to get on that soon, hopefully. But I like how he expressed his uh, concern or anger that Zack Ryder wasn't on Monday Night Raw. So Capital Punishment should be good, but unfortunately I will be on a cruise and I won't have a review up. FML, but hopefully it'll be a good pay-per-view. I hope you guys enjoy it. And that is it for me. You may see me before I go on my cruise on Sunday, but if not, Scrub Quad Pro. Peace out. What up, guys? Scrub Quad Pro here, Cash Kelly AC Sports Report, here to bring you a little coverage and review of 2011 TNA Slammiversary. Uh, it was a pretty good pay-per-view, I guess, for TNA. Um, I mean, whatever isn't bad for TNA is a win. So, let's jump right in. So the quality of this pay-per-view wasn't bad, but the build-up, mmm, that was bad. It It's pretty fucking awful. If I just found out that there was a pay-per-view today, and the pay-per-view was last night. That's not very good for TNA. And if they're looking to compete with WWE, they need a little bit better build-up than that. But I mean, other than that, it was a pretty good pay-per-view. Um, Beer Money won the Tag Team Championship, or retained the Tag Team Championships, and that's um, Robert Roode and Shelly. Yeah, I think Shelly. Um, Abyss won the X Division Championship. I think... I don't understand why Abyss is the X Division Champion, though. I mean, he's definitely not an X... He's more of a heavyweight, not an X Division. Whatever. And now, the, there was only... There was three really good matches on this card. Uh, and that, that first one was Bully Ray versus AJ Styles. And uh, I believe it was the last man standing match. Bully Ray ended up winning this match. Um, it took a toll on both competitors' bodies. Uh, TNA wasn't such a joke. I maybe would have seen the match. But I didn't, because TNA is fucking tarted. Fuck you, Egg Bischoff. But I mean, I heard it was a good match. Watched, I rewatched it, so I didn't get to watch it live. But I rewatched it. It was a pretty decent match. Um, I think Bully Ray and Alex AJ Styles are two. They work well together. And I think if TNA wants to um, move up from their low, crappy ratings, they should do this more often. Have two people that work well together and put them in good matches. Next match, we the next good match was. Mr. Anderson vs. Sting for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Now, these two are, they work good together. I mean, obviously, Sting has been around for forever, so he works good with a lot of people. And then Mr. Anderson has his whole little asshole gimmick going on, and I think he works really well with that. Um, it was a good match. I don't really understand why it was not the last match, but that's not for me to decide. That's for Eric Bischoff, who is a joke. So is TNA. But anyway, it was a good match. These two really do work well together, along with Bully Ray and AJ Styles and Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett, which is the next match. But these two work well together. Uh, this match was controversial because um, Mr. Anderson hit a low blow right in front of the ref, didn't call it, and then he hit a mic check, and that was that. And then the final match was the number one contender and the final stand the final little match of Kurt Angle versus Jeff Jarrett and obviously Kurt Angle won that match because I don't see anywhere in the near future Jeff Jarrett going on a TNA title run thank god so that, that was probably the best match of the night because those two out of the out of the three or two other matches that I said Bully Ray Nage Styles and Mr. Anderson and Sting Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett easily like hands down easily work the best out of those three matches. Th these two, have they've worked together before, they've been around in the business for a while, they know the business inside and out. There's no question that Kurt Angle is one of the best wrestlers ever, uh, and that's pretty much why they work well together. So this pay-per-view is good for TNA, the build-up was not, but the pay-per-view is good, and that's what they should be focusing on, the pay-per-view itself. 
but more build up would be a lot more helpful. So that's it. If you guys enjoyed Slammiversary, I'm happy for you. If you didn't, you shouldn't have paid for it. Catch you guys later. Peace.